the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You are not successful if you are the only one who is successful. Until your children reflect your values, you have failed. Believe me when I tell you this. Our teenagers, you off the television, they switch it on. When people watch movies or television and they say it's rated 18, all that is just to make sure the law doesn't harass you. But most people know where to find everything. Something is going seriously wrong. Otherwise, one day, like most teenagers and young people don't know what a typewriter is, someone is going to say, who is Jesus? Say, my Jesus, I don't know him. What, what do you mean? Your, he's your Jesus, not our Jesus. Say, Jesus, I don't know him. He's strange. And there rose another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. But in the name of Jesus, there are people here who will be sent to this mountain to be the preservers of the heritage of knowledge with God involved. There were two trees in Eden. One was the tree that ministered life. The other was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the Babylonian system. One of the most painful things for a parent is that after laboring for years, you watch your child become a complete opposite of your ideology. When you say Jesus, he says nonsense. When you say moral excellence, he says rubbish. When you say responsibility, he says, what does that mean? We will lose a generation if we ignore education. There are people today who can, I know it happens a lot in Africa. People just buy results. People just buy all kinds of things and they have absolutely nothing to deliver. They bribe their way from high school, primary school we call it, college and all through and there is absolutely nothing to deliver. This is a mountain. I'm showing you so that I will verify what you saw in your dream. The unusual passion for education is not carnality. Because we think spirituality is when you become a man of God on the pulpit. I'm showing you now that this is also a minister. So when you find out that the prophet who is called into the prophetic ministry is having an unusual urge to pray. He's praying 16 hours. is because of the design of his call. You find yourself having an excessive appetite for knowledge and books. You have now feel bad because that man has defined his spiritual life as the template to measure spirituality. No, stay on your course with honor. You are growing to it. Is God blessing us? The next mountain, very quickly, number four, arts and entertainment. This is very powerful. This is the mountain that teaches us how to celebrate success. This is the mountain that shows us the end of where we want to go to. This is the mountain that provides inspiration through the results of others. When you watch a footballer or you watch a football team lift the trophy, you can sit back there and just imagine yourself inside a jersey and say, look, I'm coming to. This mountain inspires in no small way. But it is also dangerous because they can teach you to celebrate success in a way that extracts Christ out of the equation. 
musicians this is the mountain of celebrities and there's nothing wrong being a celebrity provided Christ will be represented there that's why I told you you need God before you get here the pressure here is serious ask any man who has tasted of honor and influence and they will tell you it's not as easy as we say it. I will say no to everybody well obtain grace eat because the journey is far hallelujah praise the Lord imagine if Michael Jackson ever said Jesus he will save more souls than many crusades combined not because he believed what he said but just because he said it from a standpoint of influence you see the reason why every time Jesus met celebrities he did not ignore them he knew they had power he knew they had influence influence right here is powerful this is a place that shows you the the excellency of being valuable this is where value is celebrated if you are not valuable this is the schoolmaster that will teach you a lesson this is where the spotlight resides it will inspire you to be creative it will inspire you to be valuable and let me tell you there are people your assignment requires you being a celebrity it is not from a carnal standpoint so while you are becoming that award-winning tv hostess and that musician people think you are just no you are still a priest in disguise it's like a terrorist group you are a doctor but you are a terrorist you are a celebrity but at the back of it you are a dangerous prophet so people just know that you are the tv hostess and people love you you are piling awards and when the kings come to your house and say how do you do it you look at them and you tell them listen a man can receive nothing do you think they will listen to you absolutely they will if results were cheap everyone will have it results are loudspeakers is God helping us I have to rush so you must trust God and we're going to pray and in this conference there will be graces released upon people listen I made up my mind that I would never lead a people who are just spiritual alone there must be people who by the grace of God will be gatekeepers of strategic spaces of influence right here the next mountain this one is one that you should respect it's called the mountain of media comes from the word medium they are real mediators they create imagery they define your convictions you only know what you are told Genesis 3 and the Lord had the, the the Bible says and Adam had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day and when he met Adam look at me he said Adam where art thou and Adam said I heard your voice and I hid because I was naked next question who told you you have you have outsourced an information from a media that is not me the media is powerful where is media you mind control systems that's why advertisement they spend billions of dollars please talk to me your business people many of you the advertising industry for two minutes during Olympic or World Cup or any of the football international football or whatever it is for two minutes people pay millions of dollars do you know why because the media someone may want you to now begin to buy this water and then they call a celebrity to drink it and then he drinks it in a way and manner that makes you hate the one you now have in your fridge now you don't know that that hatred has been planted till you go to drink it you look at it and say no no i shouldn't i media there is something they can do to god here that will make you hate god there is something they can do to church here that will make you hate church there is something they can tell you from here that will make you hate the bible 
It is within their power to paint any picture. The media is powerful. The media can make you in five minutes to hate your wife by telling you a story and it will paint it in a way these people are masters of psychology. You look at your wife and say from today we don't stay in the same room again. Say, well, honey, we've been married for 20 years. Sir. But someone can hijack this media and make a man who was about to run away from his wife come back and say, honey, you know what? After 20 years, it still looks like yesterday. The media, mind control system. Please understand what I tell you. Africa. This is what has destroyed us. Somebody told us something that we are weak. Somebody told us something that we are not strong. Somebody told us something. Now I love the body of Christ. But listen to what I tell you. Be careful what you hear. I heard of a story. A real story of someone who was trying to climb achieve an impossible feat he was climbing a very tall palm tree and when he started climbing people were stopping him and say hey don't climb you will fall down and the man kept climbing he was looking at them they were clapping their hands and saying no and he was laughing at them and he kept climbing and at a point they kept quiet when he arrived there they were all clapping and they found out that the man was deaf so his interpretation of their criticizing him was an applause there was a media system that sponsored his growth if that man were not deaf he would never attain that height someone told you you are not beautiful that you will need to turn stones to be bred to be approved Whereas he already said you are the beloved son. Someone told you. We are victims of what we were told. But the Bible says let this mind. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. There is a mentality. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. He says having their understanding darkened. It has been alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. When God wants to save a man, he will introduce you to media. The greatest is a compendium of the thoughts of God. We call it the word of God, the logos of God. Please look at me. He says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise even unto salvation this is it i found your word and i did eat it it became a joy and a rejoicing this is the media that changed my life vetoed my background hmm. i guarantee you expose yourself to this my son he says Pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life. Not to everybody. To those who find them. And health to their flesh. When God wants to motivate you. He will bring a screen before you. You can call it a vision. You can call it a dream. He shows you tomorrow. While you are not yet there. So that all the vicissitudes of life that frustrate you in your today, suddenly there is a media that flashes you. Joseph, do not mind the pit. It is the throne you saw. When Joseph was in the pit, even in the pit he remembered, I saw the sun, I saw the moon, I saw 11 stars. Capacity. Please culture what you listen to please culture what you hear there is a generation depending on your transformation i am ever aware that everything i expose myself to endangers a generation or blesses that generation and for the sake of that generation 
since God has brought me to a point where my words are received by a generation I owe that generation the purity of spiritual communication and so I discipline myself why because the content that we feed our generation will make them do you like what I'm teaching isn't it amazing that we've not even talked about money and yet this is how to be rich you make money of understanding these are the systems that coordinate your understanding then you will lay up wealth gold as dust the mountain are we still there this mountain is important the mountain of politics and governance watch this please look at me the mountain of politics and governance south africa look at me africa hear me it was daniel in babylon that taught us the excellency of finding god's advocates in government daniel is a very interesting personality he came as a slave and then the bible says by the excellency of the spirit of god at work in him he was exalted to positions that gave him the ability to represent the purposes of god daniel begins to pray and because of his prayer the controlling power of the persians the spirits around medo persia that was manipulating the activities within that sociological sphere could not work because an advocate was in government and a house of parliament came together by the influence of spirits but they used laws to express those influence and said for 30 days king nebuchadnezzar let us pass a law they didn't say we want to attack daniel they said let us pass a law no one imagine what happens to a territory for 30 days when men don't pray a law for only 30 days and they came to catch daniel and could not find anything at all except as touching the matter of his god now watch this Daniel opened the gate and continued to pray as his custom was. And the Bible says one time they came and caught him. When they caught Daniel, now Daniel is supposed to be in trouble. Hallelujah. And because of the excellent spirit, even the king was touched. Daniel, why did you do this? You would have just obeyed the law. They throw Daniel in the lion's den. And Daniel shows them, I'm not only a member of parliament. There is something about me you do not know you threw a member of parliament but now watch a kingdom citizen many people focus on the lion they forget daniel he was not passing any law there he was showing them the excellency of the graces that were upon him hey when i wear that suit do not make a mistake i'm not only passing laws I am an advocate. I stand to promote the interests of a government. And let me speak to someone here. May the grace that makes for government rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm prophesying to people here who have had dreams. You know you are to be in the parliament in South Africa. Don't let no man keep you down. It may take time, but climb that ladder with grace and intelligence. And you sit there and represent the interest of the Christ. Listen now. Government. Hear me one policy can shut the interest of god within a territory not two not three i can be as anointed as i am but if one law is passed with all the anointing with all the prophecies with all the miracle grace one policy but there has to be someone there who will sit down and you look at yourselves there it doesn't matter what party you know that all those things are just mediums for expression and you stand what is this decision about and you go back to the holy ghost 
and you come back okay i found the idea do a b c and heaven says thank you you have preserved the next 30 years of south africa just by being a correct parliamentarian please pay attention to government it matters christ must be represented here this is where jezebel sits when jezebel comes she wants government she wants to marry whoever is the king jezebel is an interesting wife she doesn't just marry any man are you a king no i'm not interested in you where are you herod where are you ahab jezebel marries the kings so that she can use the throne to fight elijah Is able to do just what he says he will do over your life. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he South Africa, the final mountain. This is where the king of Tyre himself sits. Mm. Look up. This is the mountain of business and finance. This is where the king of Tyre, the old serpent, he sits here by himself. Not Jezebel now. Himself. Because this is the mountain that forms and controls all over mountains. Please listen to me. The mountain of finance is not about money. The mountain of finance is about control. We live in a civilization that is economically driven. Let me show you two scriptures that will bless you. Ready? Proverbs 20, I think it should be. Proverbs chapter 20. Ooh. Ooh. 22. Proverbs 22. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll go to verse 7. Proverbs 22. Read with me, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ready? One to read. Uh huh. One more time. Just keep verse two. Keep verse two, media. Now look at that very serious statement. The rich and the poor meet together. He says, "The Lord is the maker of them all." Why didn't just say, "The Lord has made all the inhabitants"? The Lord never made them so. He made them all, but they separated themselves and gave themselves a definition called rich, poor. Please look at me. The battle for prosperity is not a battle for carnal recognition. The battle for prosperity is the battle to redeem time. Please look at me. I need to explain this to you. The, the apex of dominion is dominion over time. Please listen to me. The unit of destiny is time. Whatever eats your time destroys your destiny. Are we together now? It takes time to love God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to build your relationship with your wife and husband. It takes time to know your children. It takes time to sit down and think well and live a useful life. Everybody shout time. One more time, shout time. So this is the foundation of the teaching on this mountain. Time redemption. That whatever takes your time, is taking your destiny do we agree so 
the battle for prosperity is the battle for time redemption is the battle for efficiency it's not just the battle for cars houses estates and names no those are very inferior motivations the battle for time so satan in exploring the cosmos found out he had to find where man's time goes to and he found out that our time goes to making ends meet and he says that's it i got it i got it now since your time is committed to making sure that you have the resources that make you alive and strong let me do something to your time and where you spend it so that you will now be so distracted and not have the time to serve the purposes of God watch this when the name do you know one of in Israel and in, in Egypt when the nation of Israel went to Egypt they were being given straw straw for their building is that true and then the time they had left they would tell Moses go and advocate our exodus the time has come for us to go when that message got to Pharaoh hear what Pharaoh said is it not because you have time we are giving them straw so the little time they have they can call upon God he says stop giving them straw so that the time they have left they will focus on getting straw oh you still have time to come to church in the morning let's do something to the economy you still have time to arrive home by nine and pray with your family let's do something to your life you still have time to pray for one hour with your wife no do something to your time the battle for wealth is the battle for time redemption please listen to me it takes time to truly love God now I always give this example let's assume this gentleman is say 50 years you get born again at age 40 do you know that's already a disadvantage thank God you've met Christ now but you get born again at age 40 the time it will take to receive the Holy Ghost argue about your philosophies versus the word of God and then later now agree it's going to take time to understand the things of the kingdom by that time you are 50 or 55 now you now learn the laws of wealth and all of these principles you are about to build your first house at 60 now I'm, I'm not don't feel bad it's not a testimony now hold on 40 years spiritually speaking is behind you there has to be a way of redeeming time and the bible says and i will restore the years god's concern please sit down we're almost there so what you really lost was not money what you really lost was not business what you really lost was not relationship what makes you really cry is time time give me time and anything left can come back give me time and i can rise again give me time and i can learn again but the challenge is that when time goes it does not return god does not restore time just by taking you backward he takes what is backward and makes it to wait for you please hear me let me act out something i always act out and may this be a prophecy for someone please come my friend watch this everyone these two people start their journey in destiny born the same day at the same time right both of you will move slowly and then you stop somewhere now this guy starts his journey through life and a delay happens to him everybody say delay. delay this is his colleague making progress in life and there he is standing there keep moving now you start coming 
that's not restoration that's progress because he's still behind the Holy Ghost has to pick you and bring you listen so that when I check the equation of your life I don't see the gap the lag is no longer there watch this so a woman is being barren for 10 years even if she has a child that's not restoration that's progress so God gives her triplets in nine months it's not about three children it's about taking 10 years and putting it in nine months listen these are the systems of advantage that are in the kingdom everybody's destiny by default is disadvantaged you are mandated through spiritual intelligence to now outsource these systems and begin to introduce them to your destiny space are we blessed now here we are before we pray and blow the roof off let me just establish this i tell you why god wants you to prosper he wants you to prosper so that you can gain time that a day can come i can come to your house on a tuesday morning and all i see you doing is that you're on your knees with your wife saying today is a time off to worship god and they say you want to die of hunger you say no there is a system put in place the faithfulness of god i can pay for my time dollar bill this thing right here you see has relocated people out of the will of God please look up this has made people to marry people they have no business marrying and you say it does not have a voice and you say it's weak this little note right here has made people betray friends this thing right here has made people to get into diabolic things that should not be please look up this thing right here has made others die and go to hell because the opportunity to get the gospel to them could not get this thing here has broken homes this thing here has made children who would have been presidents right now to just be pushing trucks and trolleys around the road because they could not be educated if you do not have this you are really disadvantaged now please listen now you understand my perspective so when we talk about and this is the challenge with the prosperity message as it were respectfully speaking the the object behind it and the motivation is not just a flamboyant life just to satisfy flesh there is a bigger and nobler agenda we are talking of kingdom come Listen, I left home over a week ago. I'm only going to be back home by the end of the month. And I'm only able to do that because all things are well at home. I won't lie to you here. That's true. Are we together? If all things are not well at home, the concentration to stay with the Spirit and produce the revelations that bless the nations will not be there. There's no point telling lies. We're not acting. The body of Jesus is hanging on the cross. And a prayer warrior's prayer could not bring it down. The salvation of man is at the expense of this mountain. And a man who had the influence goes to the king and says, King, I have a grave. Don't worry. Just give me the body. And that body do you know there are certain revelations you cannot have when you are poor because there is nothing you can do about it now listen the spirit of god that would bring deliverance for israel was going around egypt and everybody who could see visions was poor including joseph so he had to make do with a king 
because if if someone in the camp of israel saw the vision will he go and tell pharaoh and say i, I saw four cat seven cattle eating the lean one they say please go back and walk you are just stressed give him a day off but listen when god wants his will to be done he will make sure that will is received by men of influence I'm recalibrating your understanding about the message of prosperity let me tell you why I hate poverty I don't hate poverty just because I want to feel rich I hate poverty because of its effect in kingdom advance if poverty were neutral to the gospel neutral to the purposes of God I wouldn't have a problem with it but I found out through experience and through the word that lack of resources is terrible It's worse than sickness yeah you can be sick and not have the appetite to eat but you can be poor and all the malls are open and you are still watching and your children are watching listen to me there are many books today that should go around the world encounters with truths that can bless nations but this is what limited it not the government not a policy Are we together now? Yes, sir. Many cheap victories that would have been won. Money complicated the destinies of people, the lack of it. And I made up my mind, I said, Lord, I don't want to stand as a man of God on stage and begin to manipulate people. And so you must show me the systems. Now, please watch this. In 2007, I had a vision I had an encounter with a great man of God in that vision and then apostle I was led into a room please listen carefully when I entered that room I saw several currencies of several nations until then I didn't pay attention to anything finance it was just encounters Holy Spirit purpose kingdom fire miracles and that's wonderful but god was introducing me to a new dimension of the kingdom so that it would bring balance and efficiency to my life and now i entered that room please listen to me and when i saw that i was asked to pick and the interesting thing was the loss you would have for money under that condition ah let me pack everything no no at all i was totally not connected to it I just picked a few of the bundles and I was done. One of the few times in my life that I had the audible voice of God, I had four words, massive kingdom wealth transfer. I didn't understand what I heard. Lord, what is the meaning of this? Many years ago, we went for a crusade somewhere and it was a mighty crusade with signs and wonders but i could not pay the bills for the sound people as anointed as i was they had given me time if you do not pay these bills we may get people and go and lock you up did i steal no this thing wanted to put me in prison please listen to me listen for your children listen for tomorrow listen for the gospel listen for the sake of his majesty south africa hear me i bring you a message it is more than business it is more than buying and selling this is a battle for preserving time for efficiency whoever has this will sit on the throne you cannot remain in the corridors of power without this there's no point arguing it. It is true. Zechariah chapter 1. We're going to pray. I apologize. I know I've taken a little time, but just, just give me a few minutes to tie this up.
or let's do Haggai Haggai 1 and verse 8 let's do Haggai well done guys I'll soon release you thank you Haggai 1 and verse 8 now read with me believers go up to the mountain it's not a suggestion go up the mountain is an instruction do something on that mountain if you do it well you will come down with wood what is this made out of the prophet could not see money so he was saying what he saw then he said whatever I see you coming down with is made of wood go up the mountain you don't get wood on the mountain you get wood in a forest but this kind of wood you get it on a mountain enter that system do something an interaction in that system will grant you access to wood when you come down build the house give me space give me time and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 Harus kali brandi kapashu brahasi de balata Cry yet saying Thus saith the Lord My cities through prosperity Shall be spread abroad And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion And choose Jerusalem the name of God is heavy. It takes resources to keep it high. If we want the nations in reality, listen, there is only so much you can do for yourself in terms of your personal comfort. No matter how loud you are, there is only a limit. We are talking of the resources that will save nations in a day. There are three reasons why God blesses us. And please, if you are a man of God here and a business person now, please sit down. Sit down. Can you spare me 10 more minutes or so? Please. Please be patient with me. God brought me here to just what we want. I told you there are doors that we must close once and for all. There are three reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom. Please understand this. Number one, he blesses us to live a comfortable life. Number two, he blesses us so that we can provide the resources that makes for kingdom advance kingdom advance is not just a call that they make in church and say so this so a thousand rand a million rand is part and parcel of the responsibility of believers it's just that how we've gone about it is what makes it look like it's some crookish thing in islam and other religions they know it's a foundational teaching that part of your kingdom responsibility is to make resources available for kingdom advance. Not by manipulation, by revelation. And the third reason why God blesses us in this kingdom is to be able to reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. These are the only three reasons why God blesses us in this kingdom. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Let me tell you, poverty is evil. Just find a way of believing I'm not lying to you. Poverty is evil. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Are we together? So the Lord wants to empower me so I can be an extension of his glory across the earth. He wants to empower me so that I can contribute to the lifting of the name, to lifting the name of Jesus even in South Africa. That when the name of Jesus is going down, we stand and say, no way. The name of Jesus continues to be lifted high. Three revelations that represent the foundation for wealth. This is the mountain that concerns many people all over the world people worry and stress now young people who are in early 20s 
collapse because of high blood pressure who are they taking care of you see people talking to themselves and driving till they bash a tree they they they, they did not even see that they were alone you, you, you see if we don't if we don't do something about this we are going to lose people someone gets up and sits on his bed with the bills in front of him takes a deep breath and that's it he's gone but the bill is still there so someone is going to inherit it remember uh, uh, um, uh, second kings now that's why some people cry when others die it's not just that they are missing of course yes thank god in all fairness they are going but then what they are leaving behind now these are very real issues let me tell you very real issues please write this down foundational revelations that we must have you want to take charge of Tyre and Sidon the marketplaces of the earth number one all wealth comes from God all wealth are you tired guys I will soon release you also. you've been sitting there standing I think I have to pray for you I mean you can't be standing here for nothing now write this down please all wealth comes from God do you know what that means that God is Abba everybody say Abba Abba means source that means every other thing including your business is only a channel the moment your business or your job becomes your source you are finished so all wealth and all blessings come from God that's number one then in addition look at me please all blessings come from God through men to men this is the second revelation you must have nothing really comes from God to you it comes from God through men to men hallelujah who is into cloth in here seated here I'm seeing an anointing on you my brother this man wearing suit stand up I don't know you but this man is going far I don't know him all but I'm what I'm seeing in the spirit there is a mighty anointing mighty anointing that is coming on you for it is is a true grace for wealth but then you would dress kings believe me when I tell you this you will dress kings you will dress nobles god will connect you to great men of god across many spheres and you will experience the ministry of the holy ghost in unusual dimensions he will bring you ideas creative ideas of the spirit i release that grace upon you right now take that grace right now in the name of jesus christ let's finish up where was I all blessings now imagine that gentleman it's not just that it's today God wanted to say that to him listen 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 the day you find the man sent to you is the day God has come to you if your pastor refuse to put this program what you saw in your dream will still not happen even though God already said it please there are certain things you have to this is the world of men don't say it's only God no 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 God tells David you are king Samuel says no the answer is no David is left in the wilderness and God does not bypass him to say you are wasting my time he comes to plead with a man and say please how long shall you weep seeing that I've rejected Saul as king carry the horn don't waste this man's time men can define the destinies of others now this is not in some manipulative way but it is true God blesses men through men one man's signature can open gates over your life in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you 
oh esther who likes you oh ruth who likes you hallelujah please don't miss tonight i have to stop here let me reserve what else i have to share for tonight listen to me all wealth comes from god it comes through men to men i've spoken about everywhere here you may not be called into these various places but this one concerns you for sure it is your business hallelujah tonight i'm going to be sharing with you principles now i know that seated here are business veterans your pastor being one of them many of you here are doing well and i don't mean to insult your pedigree and make it look as though you do not understand your art but let me tell you there are superior dimensions in the spirit let me round up by teaching you three levels of wealth there are seven dimensions of prosperity the lord revealed to me that will come to the body of christ before christ returns we are only in the third dimension now the first level of wealth is called transactional wealth this is the level where you receive financial rewards among many other rewards for packaging your value turning it into products and services serving it with excellence to a targeted consumer base you call that business are we together so you are paid in exchange for your time and the value that you provide that is a level the limitation is that the price attached to it is fixed if you are a billionaire and this bottle of water is how many how, how much is this say six rands you are not going to pay a million rands for this even though you have it because it is valuable but not that scarce are we together the second level of wealth is called transformational wealth here you do not sell your value you dispense it freely you change lives and then they are mandated according to the reward system of the kingdom to bless you as an expression of their perception of your value that is why a man of God may not charge you money he will still bless you you may never even know him but God's reward system mandates that one day according to his system of justice he will be blessed for what he has done the power of transformational wealth is that you are blessed based on the perception of how valuable you are in the eyes of the giver so someone can give your man of god a hundred rands and another will say you blessed me so much you changed my life here's a million rands so in one day you can quantum leap into dimensions now the second level is very difficult because you will be a fool for many years people will take you for granted you will give and pour yourself into people many people will trivialize your impact but the bible never said you will reap where you sowed he said you will reap what you sowed you can sow in south africa and reap in the u.s the earth is a soil any location authorized by God can bring you a harvest so if all you do is business and you are not changing lives you will be slow listen one man's thank you can be your profit for 10 years you must explore all the avenues that fast track your financial growth you can sell your value and have a snail like movement for many decades and yet one person can look at you and say apostle thank you you organize the excel conference thank you 
to your dear wife would you want me to override the checks for this conference for the next 10 years transformational wealth the third value of wealth the third level of wealth is the highest as revealed of the three is called sovereign wealth wealth by the finger of God the power of the prophetic Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 listen to me it is true that the prophetic can bless And the elders of the Jews built it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel through the prophesying. Not through blocks and cement. They built and finished through the prophesying. Let me tell you this. The prophetic has been abused and manipulated in many circles in Africa, respectfully speaking. And I speak as one who is part of the body of Christ. I never speak against the body of Christ. I am part of it. I speak with all honor. But it is true that there's been a lot of imbalances and exaggerations and abuses here and there. But the prophetic still works. It can change a man's life overnight. Let me tell you how the prophetic works. Realities in the realm of the spirit all exist. What you call creation is simply transportation from the realm of the spirit. What we call in this realm creation is simply a system that transports spiritual realities from a realm and a domain that is more than the three-dimensional realm. Listen, that means the favor on your life already exists. In the realm of the spirit, the Bible says that God had blessed us with all blessings, spiritual blessings, but they reside in the heavenly places and are routed through the office of the Christ. This was Paul's doctrine to the church in Ephesus. Are we together now? And now the Bible says, listen carefully, that because those things are in the spirit, they exist. The assignment of the prophetic is to give them dates and make them appear. To appoint unto them that mourn you can make a man's next year become tomorrow that, that's the prophetic please believe what I'm telling you in the land of Samaria women were eating their future because that's what happens when people are stressed they eat their future they eat their capital they eat their children suddenly news gets to Elisha and he stands under the influence of the spirit and says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened he was making something that already existed in the realm of the spirit listen everything you are looking for is also looking for you the prophetic accelerates your connection yes the job you seek is finding you too the lifting you seek is finding you too but it can come at a slow rate that your lifetime may not accommodate. So the prophetic, with one word, truly inspired of the Spirit. Four lepers. The prophetic. Once the prophetic word is uttered, is uttered, the Spirit of wisdom begins to hover around the horizon to look for the physical actors that will make that prophecy come to pass. There is a science to prophecy. It can be understood. So when I speak over your life, I'm not just speaking over your life by the Spirit. I am calling what must enter your life within the time allocated to make that word not look like a lie. So if it takes favor to make sure that word does not fall, see the word of god is a tray it's a messenger it returns to god as proof that what was on it was delivered the word of god is a tray it carries favor it carries healing it carries blessings so if i send you you hold this and you bring it to me if i see you returning back with an empty saucer it's proof that what was on it reached me so the word of god returns to him as proof that it got to the receiver so that he will send it again 
there is the spoken word but there is the sent word the sent word is a messenger that does not fail mobile telecommunication systems is an attempt to explain how the word of god works there are 7.2 billion people on earth but i can type a text right now and send it to you it will meet a billion waves there but it will push them till it gets to your phone and that that text is quick and powerful is so sharp it can cut every other network it's an attempt to explain the word of god so that when words come you don't just say amen but you understand what should be happening if i declare and i say may your destiny help us find you you don't just say amen you expect them immediately as you walk out of here and someone says sorry i remember my wrong since 2017 i should have reached you you are now not surprised because you now know prophecy is at work we're going to pray Hello, listen these are the systems of the kingdom that make men dominion is a resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of the kingdom the weightiness the vastness and the accuracy of the spiritual information that you sustain is what defines your possibilities in this kingdom hallelujah when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was all you made up and we're standing here hear me i am a product of many anointings i'm a product of many graces I have partaken of the investment that is upon the body of Christ. The Lord wants to supply for us the grace. I know we have the grand, the, the, the evening session tonight. And I apologize for taking our time. But I just want to wrap up this time. We'll have the time to pray for people again in the evening. We may not have the time to do that. But I came here with a burden this morning and this afternoon. I want you to taste of a dimension of the grace and the power of God that is truly able to shift men. You see, the Bible says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. This, this is not some nonsense and rubbish just, just around to manipulate your mind. When the Lord Jesus appeared to me, I would share more on my encounter, hopefully maybe by night. He stretched forth his hand towards me and a light came. How I did not die is a mystery. Please listen to me. It was like taking the sun and putting it inside an ant and in another vision as I would have the Lord spoke to me and said my son on this day I give you my presence as a gift and I saw an angel of the Lord that stands by me and he said he will walk with you and I said what is his name and he said he is called the angel of the Lord's presence. And then in another encounter, the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, Every nation and every territory I will send you to, there must be someone in that nation that the light that came from me to you that light must find someone within that nation i want to pray for you 
it is the light that produces the miracles just help me with the symbol thank you come on we're around you i apologize if in any way i sound arrogant no this is not it's not in any way the boasting of the flesh we stand as ordinary people who have been helped by the spirit we are not ashamed to declare a limitation outside of his influence but please hear me in the next five minutes if you can believe what will happen to you you will marvel and wonder at the immutability the forcefulness of the power and the grace of God please lift your voice in one minute and declare enough is enough I'm tired of this level in the spirit please someone pray you're a man of God it's time to pray there are people that pray in this church South Africa pray Shift me financially, take me to another dimension. Shift my ministry to another dimension. My business. Skepari skalida sana hashala kata. Rakata baroto sodobali ashana katebrase. Hallelujah. Please listen. Every blessed man knows that you prosper based on your backing from the realm of the spirit. James chapter 2 and verse 26 Apostle James was teaching on faith and works and he veered off and borrowed a kingdom concept he says for as the body without a spirit is dead you kill the body of anything by taking its spirit component away from it and you give life to everybody your business is a body where is the spirit that backs it your job is a body where is the spirit that backs it? Because James said when all you have is a body without the spirit component that backs it, it is dead. Your church is a body. Where is the spirit component that backs it? It is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the Lord's doing. I want to shift you from being ordinary. Men of God, it's time for us to rise to supernatural dimensions of power. Apostles and prophets and teachers, business people, it's time for you to rise by a mystery men cannot understand. By what force does your business move forward? How come you attract clients from all over the world? It is by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now listen. Our time is gone. Just two prayers. I want to release the grace for speed. Please hear me. The Bible says, And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. When speed is on you, you can start from anywhere to anywhere listen as i pray for you the power of god will come on you many of you will start running physically please help them and bring them so they don't injure themselves whether you are an usher or not i stand in the name of jesus and i decree and declare house of treasures south africa take the grace for speed take that grace now Take that grace now. Help them. Take that grace now. Help them please. Speed. I take away delay. By the spirit of God. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I shift you. In ministry. I shift you. In business. Speed. Speed. Help them. Help them. Help them. Speed. Hold them. 
so they don't injure themselves they are not running on their own please hold them speed kaparata shikata speed hold them please hold that lady please let her not injure herself please whether you are an usher or not hold them anyone running around so that they don't injure themselves i shift you again i'm praying take that grace take that grace take that grace take that grace in business take that grace in ministry take that grace i bring you the power of the holy ghost upon your life ideas quick understanding Time to pray for you. Take that grace. 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 Last prayer, Acts chapter 12. The influence has a gate. Acts chapter 12. We're rounding up. Please look up. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the Jews. Quickly please, verse 2. And he killed James the brother of John with the sword. 3. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also next verse 4 and when he had apprehended him he put him where remember the purpose was to shut his influence so he kept him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people 5 Peter was therefore kept in prison but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him now watch what is about to happen to someone and Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with hands and chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison next verse hallelujah and behold look up I want to show you how doors open that bring a man to a realm of influence the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in prison where did the light start shining the light comes to you in prison first and then he smote Peter by the side saying raise him up arise up quickly and his chains fell off his hands the chains had fallen but he was still in prison follow the progression next verse the angel said to him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals and he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 now watch this he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision verse 10 is where the mystery is watch this and when they were past the first gate the prison had three gates the first gate brings you out of that place of dungeon then he went to the second gate you are out but you are not yet in the city you are not in the prison but you are not in the city either and then he came to a mysterious gate called the iron gate take note immediately he said this is the gate that leads to where the city there is a gate that leads to the city for your business for your products and he said he opened the gates and he went out when that gate opens the next thing you see is the city influence this is the gate that grants you access to the hear ye him anointing there is a grace that makes a generation hear you just because you have something to sell or something to say 
does not mean people will come to reward your value he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder can I pray that prayer for you in the name of Jesus house of treasures South Africa business people politicians men and women of God I stand by the rod of the prophetic and the apostolic and I speak to the gate that must be open for your influence Ephata, be open be open for your business be open for ministry be open in the name of Jesus Christ dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline